Hey, this is Digital by Computing, and today we're going to be talking about security and the good things that you can be putting in place in a business to improve on your security. In a world where cybersecurity risk and you know people trying to infiltrate, attack, hackers coming in, data being leaked out of businesses, we want to mitigate risks. We want to prevent these things from happening before they occur. Set up a domain and Active Directory. Active Directory is a Microsoft tool that lets you manage and control all of your computers on a network. This includes your workstations as well as your servers. Implement a business grade firewall. This is imperative. Unless you have a business grade firewall, a firewall that has enough security built into it, there's really no point in having a firewall. Look at controlling the ports that are opened on that firewall. Don't have any, any rules. From point A to point B, make sure only the relevant ports are open. Implement regular security patching across all of the computers on your network. You know, companies such as Microsoft and Apple, that will release patches regularly, generally on a monthly by month basis, that are security fixes, patches, for vulnerabilities that have been discovered on the operating systems and on the software. So getting systems in place to make sure that patches are pushed out, look at retiring legacy, end of life operating systems and software. This is software that no longer is supported, Vendors such as Microsoft and Apple, for example, will not release updates for software that is no longer supported, so software that is now end of life and is legacy. If there are external facing services or you need servers that need to be externally internet facing, get them into a DMZ or a DMZ zone. This is the zone that is secure, that needs to be set up to be completely isolated from your internal network. The systems and servers in this DMZ zone can be exposed out onto the internet but they should be completely isolated from your internal network. Limit your DAs and your EAs. These are your domain admins and your enterprise admins. Only the right people should have access to a domain administrator or an enterprise admin. You shouldn't be giving out this privilege to just anybody. Put adequate systems and procedures in place to control who gets access and what gets access into your network. You don't want people to just be able to walk around your office, contractors, customers, anybody just walking off the street, coming into your office, plugging into a network point on the wall, in a meeting room, anywhere, and access your network. Similar to that is implementing adequate Wi-Fi security. Don't have your Wi-Fi open for anybody to use. Wi-Fi should be controlled via preferably over Active Directory, so that you need AD credentials to be able to actually access your Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi should not be given out. If you have a password for your Wi-Fi, it should not be given out to anybody because anybody could literally just access your entire network by connecting into your Wi-Fi. If you do need customers or contractors to be able to access your Wi-Fi when in your office, look at setting up a guest Wi-Fi that is completely isolated from your other Wi-Fi and from your internal network. Hardware that is end of life should be decommissioned. Hardware that is end of life is um, no longer under support. As well as that, the hardware itself does have software loaded onto it, such as firmware, that can no longer be updated because the hardware vendor no longer you know, supplies that software for that hardware. So hardware that is now end of life should be replaced with hardware that is within life. Ensure that your hardware and your infrastructure assets are securely disposed. So often people just throw out old hardware, throw out you know, throw out old desktops and laptops straight into the bin, they end up in landfill, and anywhere from, from your office to that landfill, and even in landfill, anybody can just get access to it. They could be sold off to wherever. Remove legacy operating systems. There are, similar to what we talked about, patching of uh, Microsoft servers, uh, Windows 2003 is, is a legacy server. That server no longer exists. You can't get 2003 anymore. So Microsoft will not release patches for server 2003, which means if you're running legacy operating systems, then those operating systems are essentially open and vulnerable to attack. Put a good practice in place to not store business data on the end user computers. Have systems in place that they can store data on servers and work directly off a server, whether that be a personal home drive, like an H drive, or directly on other servers, on other shares. There's no good reason why a user's passwords should be 
set to never expire. Implementing something like a 60 or a 90 day reset policy across your passwords is imperative. Along with password expiration is making sure that those passwords are complex. So putting in complex procedures on those passwords, that they have to be a certain character length, that they have to be both uppercase and lowercase, they have to contain a number, and they have to contain a special character. Look at disabling earlier versions of SSL and even early versions of TLS. Users should be able to access their computer and do what they need to do to have their, to, you know, to do their work, to do their day-to-day -day job, but shouldn't have full administrative access to their own computer. As soon as a staff member leaves an organization and they're terminated, get their account disabled straight away. Not just their Active Directory account, but every account that they've got disable it straight away. You don't want staff that have now left the business to still have active accounts within your business. Look at encrypting the hard drives within your computers. Now, this is something that a lot of people overlook sometimes, but if a computer is lost or stolen, the hard drive inside the computer can still be opened up, can be taken out, plugged into a USB hard drive or a USB case, and plugged into a USB drive, and then they've got access to that full computer's hard drive. Get endpoint protection installed on every single computer. This is gonna protect you from viruses, from spyware, uh, any other sort of malicious software that may be installed onto a computer. Getting this software installed, controlled across all of your fleet is imperative. If you have file servers or file shares or folders out on your network, ensure that you've got adequate security and permissions in place across those files and folders. Good example. Uh, your marketing department shouldn't be able to go into your finance folder and see everybody's pay. Get additional email filtration and protection systems in place for your email. Some of these email systems already have some basic filters already out of the box that can control what emails come in to your network. Control and disable certain attachment types on emails. Attachments such as executable files. Files that can be double clicked from an attachment, somebody may not even know what that attachment is, if they double click on it, and they introduce malicious software into your network. Secure your server room access, your comms cabinet access, your data center access. You don't want your servers, your switches, your network equipment, just sitting in the corner of an office outside of any sort of protection. Anybody could just walk around, get access to it, take things out, introduce things into your network you don't want. Have those in a cabinet. Have that cabinet locked. There's no point in having a door on there with a key if it's not locked. Make sure that that key is given only to the right people. If you have a server room, have that server room locked. If it's a data center, have the proper controls in place to access that data center. If you have unmanaged switches, switches that don't have any smarts behind them, they're called dumb switches, remove them and replace them with managed switches. Managed switches have more control over what the ports can do. Many security breaches are actually initiated from your staff themselves. Staff education is imperative. Whether this is staff trained internally, whether they're sent off-site, whether if it's communicated via emails or internal meetings, get your staff trained up and aware of security concerns out in the IT and out in the business industries. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.